Today's video was sponsored by Storyblocks Video. This would be a second-hand lens that you most certainly would not decide to buy upon seeing it. Problem is, not every used lens for sale is going to be this obviously worn out. Lenses that look perfectly fine at a glance could be hiding some defects that may potentially affect performance and image quality as well. So to avoid making any bad purchases, I'm going to share how I personally check a lens when buying one from a previous owner. I should make it clear that not all of the items that I am about to point out are factors that will downright render the lens unusable, so I'm not saying to cancel the purchase if a lens doesn't get a perfect score based on what I'm about to tell you, but what they should affect is the value of the lens, so how much you're expected to pay for it, and should you expect to spend more money on maintenance for the lens after owning it. So let's start with a rather obvious one. Visually inspecting the lens, first thing I typically look for is are there any chips or scratches on the front and rear elements of the lens? It makes every sense to check for that first, after all they are the two pieces of the optical design that are exposed at either end of the lens. And it should go without saying, but if there are any filters attached to the front element such as a UV filter, remove that before the inspection of the front element. And if there are any scratches, generally that's really bad news for the lens because that can directly affect image quality in various ways. For example, chips and scratches can show up in your bokeh and they are really hard to hide. So any defects to the front and or rear elements can be bad enough to become deal breakers. And needless to say, it's got a very large impact on the resale value of the lens. Second place to look is the barrel of the lens. It's very common to have some scratches on the body of a used lens. Those would just be cosmetic, not too big of a deal if you ask me. But what you really want to look for are signs that the lens have been dropped before. And those would usually show up as dense or deep scratches on either ends of the lens. Now I've seen lenses that carry on working perfectly fine without a hitch even though they've been dropped, but sometimes dropping a lens can either deform or break the filter threads, preventing you from attaching filters onto the lens which will be an inconvenience. Another spot on the lens that I like to check is the lens mount, specifically how worn out is the lens mount. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, here's a comparison between a rather worn lens mount and a relatively new lens mount. You can see a substantial amount of the metal has been worn out, even revealing what's underneath that outer layer. But this is one of those things that won't really affect image quality or performance, but what it can do for you is give you a general idea of how heavily the lens has been used. A worn out lens mount implies that the lens has been mounted and unmounted a lot of times. So you can expect it to have been heavily used and all of its moving parts have been subject to higher amounts of wear and tear. It's not something that's super definitive, just something to consider. But most of the time when we opt to buy a used lens, it's to save some cost. And I would like to share one of the services that I'm using to save cost when licensing footage shot by others for me to use in my videos, and that's Storyblocks Video. Instead of charging you for every single clip that you download, Storyblocks Video works as a subscription. And their rather affordable unlimited video plan gives you unlimited downloads of anything in the library, so not only can you use as many clips as you like, you can test different clips out in your project to see how it feels. You can use those clips anywhere you like, including here on YouTube, and they are filmed to professional standards, and some are even up to 4K. It's really easy to search for a clip, and they even have a collection of After Effects templates included in the library that can add a lot of production value to your content. Check out the link in the description to learn more about Storyblocks video. And at number four, we want to check the zoom and focus rings. Now it's not completely uncommon to have the rubber on the rings become loose, but those can actually be quite easily replaced. But what's important is to listen and feel for any grit that may have gotten into the focus or zoom rings. It's not a hard one to miss because basically when you turn the rings, they shouldn't be stuck or make any loud grinding noises. Now, if the lens is a focus by wire lens, you want to also check if the manual focus works properly. And focus by wire lenses need to be mounted on a camera body and powered on before manual focus can be operated. And this is important to check because I've definitely seen the focus by wire go haywire, no pun intended, on some of those lenses. So next up is checking for dust and fungus inside the lens. Most of you probably already know to check for this one, so you undo the front and rear lens cap and you look through the lens while pointing it at a light source, so any dust or fungus growing inside of the lens is backlit and clearly visible. You would also want to make sure that the front and rear elements are already squeaky clean before doing this so that you can be sure that any impurities you see are indeed 
in the lens and not on the lens. But just from my experience, almost every single time I pick up a lens and perform this check, I'm almost guaranteed to notice some amount of dust inside the lens. So don't freak out right away if you see any. Most of the time, it doesn't really affect the image. But to find out if it does, and that's when it becomes a potential problem, just take a picture of some highlights, any bright spots, but right before you take the picture, throw it way out of focus and inspect the bokeh ball. Dust and fungus inside the lens can show up as spots in the bokeh and that's what you don't want. But if the bokeh is clean, even though you may have observed some tiny bits of dust by looking through the lens, then for the most part, it's not really going to be an issue. And number six is very important to check unless you are buying a manual lens and that is to check if the autofocus works. This should be very self-explanatory, although you do need a compatible camera body to mount the lens on in order to test it. Otherwise, it would be pretty much impossible to tell if a lens's AF is still working just by looking at the lens. So it always makes sense to bring a camera body to test out a lens before buying it, unless you are very certain that there would already be one readily available from wherever you are buying it from. And finally, this is one that's really easy to miss, and that is checking the lens iris, especially on lenses that have an electronically controlled aperture diaphragm, which is the majority of modern photography lenses. Because the aperture mechanism does wear out, and I've personally had it fail on my own lenses, and I've had to get it fixed. And the tricky thing about these is, they typically behave perfectly normally when you shoot them wide open, but as soon as you stop down, it gives you an error. And that is why I say it can be easy to miss because if you test a lens that has this problem without stopping it down, you wouldn't know. Sometimes the aperture diaphragm can also outright jam in a stopped down position and not be able to recover to its wide open state, but those are easier to spot. So take a few test shots at different aperture settings to make sure that the aperture diaphragm is indeed working properly. And say if it is faulty, it's not the end of the world, you can still send it to have it fixed. It cost me around 440 Malaysian ringgit to have mine fixed by Canon on this exact lens, which is just over $100 US, just to give you a rough idea of how much these might cost. So if you or somebody you know is making a purchase for a used lens soon, I hope this video has been helpful. And if there are any tips that I have missed, do let me know down in the comments below. So subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to see more videos just like this. And I will see you in the next video. And by the way, the algorithm thinks you should watch these other videos of mine.